Welcome back, everyone. We're here live in San Francisco for the Red Hat Summit. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host, Stu Miniman, filling in for Dave Vellante. And our next guest is Ashish Badani, Vice President and General Manager of OpenShift for Red Hat. Uh, one of the uh, uh, most anticipated interviews for Stu and I because uh, we love what's going on platform as a service. We love all the activity going on in the Red Hat ecosystem around operating systems and the future of, of open source. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me on. So, uh, um, first give us an update on OpenShift because you know there's a lot of FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the market around, oh, this guy's got this and we got this. And, and some people say, oh, I never run into accounts. So, for the record, straighten it out right now. You guys have, have traction, do you have traction? Can you give some examples of the update of where OpenShift is right now? Fun in our industry? I never heard of that before. <laughs> well, jokes aside, um, let's talk about that uh, for a few minutes, right? So, for the folks who aren't as familiar with the OpenShift technology and, and the project, uh, we started about three years ago uh, with OpenShift Online, our public platform as a service. Uh, we run that off of Amazon EC2, uh, seeing phenomenal growth. We've had over 1.6 million applications that have been created on the platform. Um, adds about 2,000 users every week. Um, user count, app count growing by about 150, 200% year on year. Right? So, so that is incredible to us. What that also allows for us to do is to be able to take that public cloud experience and translate that into the OpenShift Enterprise private paths. And all of this along with OpenShift Origin, which is an upstream community. Right, so there's a really virtuous, if you will, triangle that's formed between upstream, public, as well as private. Now, with regard to customer adoption, there are a number of customers um, that are public references for us, um, FICO, Cisco, and in fact, there are many that you can meet with at the Red Hat Summit uh, and talk to uh, while you're here. Um, so with regard to the direction that we're going in, we, you know, we feel pretty confident of the progress we've made so far uh, and uh, the amount of adoption we've seen in our online public paths as well as our enterprise technology leads us to believe we're on the right path. So before we talk about some of the news, the cool news you guys have with uh, Gear D and all the cool application delivery stuff, we already had Docker on earlier with the founder, Solomon. Great guy, I love to meet with the founders of companies just because it's just so awesome to talk to because it's so hard to do a startup and have the kind of success that they're having, certainly both on a, on a, on a company basis and also uh, in the community. Um, talk about the, the, the role of the past, because in the cloud game, software communities are the critical part of the ecosystem success. And rising tide floats all the boat, that's the open source way. Why is the platform as a service such a battleground right now, in your opinion, and what are you guys doing differently vis-a-vis, -vis, say, Cloud Foundry and others' approaches that are trying to offer a different alternative to the open source roadmap? Yeah, great question. So, if you were able to attend uh, the morning's keynote, Paul Cormier talked about the fact that the application is king, right? And what that means is there's a lot of energy uh, focused around innovation that's happening at the application level. Consequently, what we're focused on is ensuring that all the work that happens underneath, whether it's platform as a service, uh, infrastructure as a service, is as commoditized as possible. So, the amount of time and money um, enterprises can put to work is on the application itself. Now, with regard to the work we're doing, so Docker's a great example of that, right? And in, in Red Hat, in its true open source way, uh, has entered into a technology collaboration with Docker. Uh, we began the process around September of last year, um, and what we've now done is expanded that. Um, we're very active in the Docker community. We're amongst um, the top contributors um, with, with Docker uh, into the technology stream that we have. And then, of course, what we're also doing is the announcement that we made today are around taking some of the Docker technology and making the application that we have around OpenShift portable across environments, leveraging Docker. So OpenStack obviously is a huge bet for you guys. We're going to talk more about that tomorrow. But talk about how that plugs into OpenStack and are all the methodologies and the standards of the process of open source consistent with the two? Is it a nice fit? Explain the fit between OpenStack and the past layer of what you guys offer. Um, so the OpenShift teams, the OpenStack teams work very closely together. Um, you know, there's a project called Heat which allows for orchestration um, it's an open stack based project and we want to make sure the OpenShift uh, is a first class citizen of that. Um, there are heat templates that are now available uh, from Red Hat uh, as well as in the community that you can download and use. Um, that makes for uh, OpenShift and OpenStack a great experience. We find numerous customers that are interested in running OpenShift and OpenStack, taking advantage both of the efficiency of the infrastructure service as well as the application flexibility that runs uh, with the platform and the service on top. So, so one point, Stu, one more second, one, just to follow up one more point on that. How would you define success for you guys? Because I mean, 
it's always kind of elusive. Open source is all about, you know, kind of feeling your way through, but also having some honor, transparency, uh, and certainly on the, on the contribution side, there's right. rules of the road, if you will. So how do you guys view success in the OpenStack, OpenShift collaboration? Is it shipment of code, guys high-fiving each other, customers uh, getting value? Right. How do you guys internally look at that saying, you know, we can determine success if blank happens? So the uh, author of Zappos, if you're familiar with, with him, you know, yeah. he wrote a great book. Uh, and he talked uh, about delighting customers, right? And, and the way we think of success is if we are delighting our, our customers, our community, our users, then all good things will follow from that. So as long as we're doing all the things that avoid lock-in, make sure that application infrastructure is flexible, portable, we're taking cost out of that, so customers can be more successful in the areas that they want to actually invest in, um, we believe not only will we be successful, but our users and community will be successful as well. So, so Ashesh, when, when it comes to the discussion of middleware, obviously, you know, Red Hat is, you know, got a vested interest of right. having customers use JVoss. You know, how flexible is OpenShift uh, to be able to use, you know, more than just JVoss? Right. So, yesterday, um, we demoed a lot of technologies, uh, XPath services running off of OpenShift. And so, it was actually quite an incredible demo. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to catch that. Um, that was actually OpenShift running off of OpenStack. Uh, and what we did was took in Twitter feeds, um, and was able to use Fuse technologies um, to call other patterns, um, ensure that uh, we were integrating that with the Salesforce, um, and then uh, set off a business process, uh, and then have Twilio send out you know, emails and text messages, right? So quite an you know, amazing demonstration of the power of um, using technologies you know, across the spectrum, right? IAS platform and service, as well as XPaaS and, and the JBoss service running on top. Uh, but the environment that both uh, infrastructure service as well as you know applications, uh, uh, platform as service, the OpenShift platform has, is that they're inherently flexible. So to the extent if people want to use other technologies, um, they can go out and extend it themselves via building cartridges, quick starts, but also now increasingly using Docker containers um, or Docker images specifically in this case uh, to be able to use that within OpenShift. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, the marketplace that you guys launched? Um, and I'm wondering if you could look at what uh, you know Pivotal announced with the, the Pivotal Foundation, which mm -hmm. of course you've got the likes of GE and IBM, who's obviously a, a good Red Hat partner, mm -hmm. kind, kind of seems that they're signing up for that. Um, it, it looks like a very different ecosystem that you have in the marketplace compared to what Pivotal's built. Right, so our focus has been consistently on an open ecosystem um, and a very open approach to partnering. Um, so we announced the Red Hat uh, OpenShift uh, marketplace yesterday. Uh, and the best way to think of that is, you know, there are certain services that we provide as part of Platform as a Service, uh, but obviously that doesn't cover the entire universe of services that, that uh, application users need. Um, also, our partners wanted a way to be able to attach more to these millions of applications that have been created on our platform. Uh, and so we've launched our initial set of partners, and of course it's open for more to join us. We also announced technology collaboration with uh, uh, the uh, Hadoop data platform provider, Hortonworks, yesterday. Uh, and that's to ensure that we're able to take the application that are running off of OpenShift and integrate uh, more closely with uh, some of the technologies that uh, are coming out of Hortonworks as well. Um, and so I think our approach to collaboration uh, is a very open one, uh, and we're finding a lot of uh, companies are, are valuing that. Um, another one that actually has played out completely out in the open uh, is with a company that delivered um, a completely open .NET implementation of OpenShift that runs natively in a Windows environment. So folks, for folks who are using OpenShift, um, they can use both uh, applications that are running off of Linux, but also off of Windows. So again, an example of open uh, collaboration and partner. Yeah, so, so you know, when I look at Red Hat, Red Hat's always done a great job of taking an open source project and providing an enterprise version mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that's best agreed. You've done that with Linux, uh, you know, you've done that with KVM, right. uh, you, you're, you're working on doing that with OpenStack. Right. Um, so d does OpenShift fit into that model, or is it a fair critique to say that, you know, the, the ecosystem still needs to be built out some? I, I liked your .NET example, there, but um, it just doesn't feel like there's as much of a community built yet, and is, it, is, it, is that just kind of a work in progress? Uh, so it's been developing over a period of time, right? So I don't know if you again paid attention to the announcement that Cisco's made. Um, Cisco's gone out and built uh, what they call a CVD, a Cisco Validate Design, which is their reference architecture uh, that integrates uh, some of the Cisco technologies along with OpenShift. Um, you'll actually see some more announcements with large partners coming tomorrow. Uh, who are also working closely with us. So I don't think it's fair in the world that we live in 
to think of our marketplace as just dominated by the largest vendors, right? I would encourage for uh, users to think about the adoption of the platform and the rate of change and innovation. So if you look at the OpenShift platform, we've had four product releases uh, in the last 12 months. Uh, our online platform has seen about 15 service updates and over 15 new features and enhancements have been built up. Um, so our innovation model is one that happens out in the open uh, along with a very nimble set of products. Okay, great. I'm wondering now if you can unpack for us kind of the XPaaS announcement. Mm -hmm. And to, to be honest, when I, when I talk to most users, I think, think I said this before, most of them are still kind of having trouble wrapping their heads around what PaaS is. Right. And you guys have kind of created, is it subcategories? Or you know, what, what is right. the XPaaS announcement, if right. you can explain that? So one of the things that we're finding when we talk to customers around Platform as a Service is we spend a fair amount of time just explaining what Platform as a Service is. Um, different customers have different opinions of that. Uh, think of XPaaS in the simplest way of if I've used JBoss and JBoss middleware, how do I ensure that those technologies are brought into a cloud world, right? Uh, whether it's a private cloud or a public cloud. What we're trying to do with OpenShift is ensure that each of those sets of services, so whether they are around business process management, business rules, uh, some of the technologies that uh, come via Fuse, so uh, a service bus, uh, messaging technologies, uh, data uh, virtualization technologies are all consumed as first class services within OpenShift. So XPaaS is just an extension of an application platform that is now able to allow for all these different technologies that people are used to consuming in their data centers to also be available in a cloud application platform. Shish, I want to talk about what Jim talked about when I asked about the OpenStack and the, the past layer. He says, oh, John, you got to look at it with the host versus guest. Host being the integrated stack, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But I was talking about the guest, multi-vendor, dealing with other people. Talk about the role an opportunity Microsoft has with Red Hat. Um, they have, they've got a big cloud first initiative going on right now. This ability to play well with others is a real big part of this host versus guest kind of thought that Jim mm -hmm. was putting out there. So, Talk about that opportunity and challenge that, that might, your customers might have. There's a lot of Microsoft and a lot of the enterprises. I got Microsoft, I got Red Hat, all running on you know, servers and storage, et cetera. So talk about the Microsoft opportunity. Um, so Red Hat supports um, technologies that come from other large providers, right? So VMware technologies, uh, Microsoft virtualization technologies are all supported within the uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux platform uh, from a virtualization perspective. The opportunity we have going forward, and I'm actually delighted to hear the announcement that Microsoft made most recently, maybe a week or two ago, with regard to an open source foundation, yeah. and they're starting to uh, contribute some technologies into that. Um, and so if Microsoft is starting to take steps in those directions, I think we have a lot of opportunities for collaboration. I mentioned to you uh, the .NET project that we've done for OpenShift, um, and that's out in the open now. Yeah. And that's, an, again, another area that we'd love to collaborate with them and, and make sure that the Azure platform interoperates with you know, the OpenStack environment as well as the OpenShift. The good news is Satya Nantella knows his cloud and he's very open source right. driven. They donated to, uh, some reference designs to the Open Compute Foundation. They had uh, a lot of open source activity. So they're playing, I mean, playing, I mean, Microsoft looks pretty good right now in terms of a partnerships opportunity. So you see that as an opportunity. We do, and the other one uh, that you know, we've obviously been working closely with is Amazon. You know, we run our OpenShift online platform up. Amazon EC2, and increasingly lately working very closely also with the Google uh, team and the Google Cloud Platform. So you announced you know, RHEL availability, RHEL Enterprise Linux availability in the Google Platform, and then there's additional areas of collaboration that we embark on with them. So we're going to live in a world that's interesting. Okay, we're getting some tweets from the outside world, so I got to bring the questions in. We're getting, uh, so where is Cloud Foundry relative to your competitive positioning, and where do you hold serve? Um, and talk about the DevOps impact. So there's two questions, one is, how are you vis-a-vis -vis the competitive uh, aggressiveness of, say, Cloud Foundry, um, and where are you guys holding server, holding the line, rel relative to your advantage over Cloud Foundry? So the Red Hat model has never been one um, of thinking of defining markets based on just what a, a competition does, right? We'd like to focus on uh, the problems that we see when we talk to customers um, and how we're going to go off and address them. So I talked a lot about the rate of change innovation that we brought to bear. Um, I can talk some more about you know, the adoption that we've had, right? Um, and our strategy remains consistent of uh, open source community, an online PaaS public uh, offering, as well as uh, a private PaaS offering. Um, and then working with partners to ensure that the, there's a differentiation, uh, as well as openness and participation that happens around that. Um, so 
I guess what I would like to focus on is the fact that we continue making progress on that mission. So the announcements that we made today with regard to application portability across Docker, as well as the new GearD project, which really is focused on ensuring that not only is there a first class developer experience, right, so really trying to bring DevOps to life um, for users, but also ensuring um, that as these applications are portable, that there's a fair amount of consistency and certification that stays with it, and that we're able to wire these different applications in complex enterprise application topologies. So Stu, before, I know Stu's jumping for a question, I can see him biting at his, at his, at his lip there, but I want to just follow up on the DevOps and, and drill down and saying, ask you directly, what is the DevOps data center of the future? So if you talk to folks who are, uh, for lack of a better term, DevOps purists, they'll tell you there is no such thing as a DevOps guy. Right, yeah. uh, and there's no such thing as a DevOps product only. Right, so DevOps is uh, a way of embracing the amount of change that's happening, the notion of continuous integration, continuous delivery. You know, there are all these terms around uh, industrialization. Some say it's just a mindset. And, and manufacturing, yeah. right, with regard to Kaizen, your know, continuous improvement, Kanban. You know, all, all of these terms that come in. I um, mean, I'm sure there's some viewers who are playing DevOps bingo right now. I think all these terms are on the <laughs> DevOps bingo card. So the you know, game. go ahead, right, go ahead and have your you know favorite drink of choice. Um, uh, but but what, I'll, what I'll say is that uh, the, the principles that are brought to bear, right, and the, and the examples that we hear of continuously are around Netflix and, and Facebook and so on, and every company wanting to become like that. Well, it's not appropriate necessarily for every company to become exactly like them, but there are lots of good uh, practices that we can bring to bear. So, uh, again, with OpenShift, we focus intensely on the developer experience, right? And by the way, you know, being in the public cloud leads to that. Because if you're not focused on the experience, right, you will not get applications that are being created on your uh, platform, and you, you know, users will walk away. Um, so the integration with Git, right, making sure that you know, developer IDE is So you're basically are saying supported. it's a software-defined data center. You're basically saying that the future data center is software centric. Right, well, I guess what I'm saying is what, where DevOps will lead you to um, is this notion that you, know, you need much more application flexibility um, and portability across environments, whether they're physical, virtual, public, or private, but all the while while doing it, making sure that the, the, dev, the, the developer experience is paramount. So Ashesh, we're running out of time. I've got sure. one last question for you. I heard the standing room only in, in the OpenShift right. uh, session. Um, when you talk to the users out there, what's kind of the early first steps? You know, what's either the, the problem that they're solving or the use case right. uh, that you know you're, you're finding customers you know latching onto with over 1.6 million apps right. uh, that you've deployed? You know, what, what, what are some of the early wins that customers can get by de deploying OpenShift or just so diving in? So there are often different points of entry into uh, OpenShift, right? So for example, in the case of OpenShift Online and the 1.6 million application app uh, uh, application that we've talked about, um, some folks may just be looking for or a, a platform that's flexible and scalable, they can very quickly get their application up and running, right? So whether it's a mobile application, some kind of new web application they want to develop, uh, maybe it's a departmental application of some sort, maybe you know, someone's built a routing application. And I encourage all the users to go to openship.com, uh, uh, check out our application galleries to see the diversity of applications that we have in play there. Uh, but enterprises are, are sometimes looking uh, in that direction, but what they're also really enjoying about platform as a service, specifically OpenShift, is the fact that we're supporting multiple different developer uh, tools and frameworks, uh, but at the same time with a very robust operating system, security that lies underneath, right? So infrastructure efficiency, uh, density, and flexibility um, that comes along with uh, a great developer experience. Ayash, thank you so much for coming on, on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. We'd love to spend some more time with you and certainly uh, we'll follow up with you on, on all the activity around OpenShift. Certainly, obviously, a key part of the industry battleground that we're watching closely. Customers are as well, and obviously having Red Hat yeah. behind you certainly has the wind, uh, wind at your back. Um, validation, great success. Congratulations on your growth of your community. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you.